In this video, we're going to discuss five things that'll help you learn faster and progress as a software engineer. I've made lots of mistakes in my software engineering career, and not knowing these five things is definitely one of them. If I had known these things earlier, I have no doubt I'd be a better software engineer than I am today. Be sure to stay until the end of the video to make sure that you're learning as efficiently as possible. This brings us to our first thing that'll help you learn faster as a software engineer, which is finding someone whose work or career you'd like to emulate. Finding someone whose footsteps you'd like to follow in can make a huge difference to what you learn and how quickly. Whether that person possesses specific skills, knowledge, or a level that you're after, having someone who can tell you what they did to get to where they are is absolutely huge. Think about it like tests that you had to take during school. Studying for the test and coming up with answers on your own is difficult and you're almost bound to get some questions wrong. Compare this with reviewing for the exam by attending your teacher's review sessions and there could be a huge difference. Review sessions allow you to leverage your teacher. Someone who already knows all the material can help guide you in your studying and knows everything about the exam you're going to take. Well, maybe not. We all had those teachers who would make the exam the night before the test. These two different ways of studying for an exam are comparable to having or not having someone who you like to emulate. Defining your own steps to get from where you are to where you want to be is long, inefficient, and in the worst case, incorrect. You might make decisions that lead you down the wrong path, distract you, or don't move you closer towards your goal. But defining success with someone who's already arrived at the destination you're gunning for help ensure success, efficiency, and things to be wary of or look out for along the way. Chances are they've made some mistakes along their path too, and they can do their best to steer you clear of those further increasing the efficiency of your path. The next thing that'll help you learn faster is embracing the idea of yak shaving. That's right, you heard me correctly, yak shaving. And no, I'm not talking about the literal process of shaving a yak. Yak shaving is a concept used to describe a process we're all too familiar with in software engineering. The need to solve seemingly endless smaller problems before being able to actually move on with the part of the project you were originally trying to work on. I imagine this idea is probably named after yaks because I imagine shaving a yak is an incredibly painful process and seems endless thanks to their incredible amounts of hair, or is it fur? I don't think I've ever said the word yak so many times in my entire life. Anyways, the good news with this tip is that more than anything, I believe this requires a change in your mindset. We've all been there when you're trying to learn a single concept, but to understand that one concept, you discover you need to learn an additional three other concepts first. Those three lead to five others, and this process continues for what seems like forever. At this point, you have two choices. First, ignore the underlying dependencies and attempt to understand what you set out to learn at a high level without them, or two, dive deep and begin learning the topic related to the underlying dependencies. Choosing the latter one always makes sense since it requires more time and, let's be honest, effort, but I encourage you to dive deeper into the underlying dependencies as often as possible. Once you eventually learn all the underlying dependencies and bubble back out to learn the initial thing you set out to, you have a full picture of how all the pieces fit together, and this is invaluable. And if I'm being honest, most times that I've had trouble with concepts or topics in software engineering, it's because I didn't understand enough about the lower level details. Changing my mindset and leaning into yak shaving has made me a better software engineer and has allowed me to move faster once I've internalized all the lower level details of a topic. Yak shaving actually reminds me of a well-known phrase from the Navy SEALs, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. This phrase is a reminder that oftentimes the way to move fastest is by taking your time and doing the job right. By skipping the step of learning about underlying details in an attempt to move faster, you might do things incorrectly. The need for you or someone else to eventually discover the mistake or the things that you did wrong takes time, and ironically, it might make you move slower. When this happens, chances are it won't be long until you're back at square one, except this time you're in favor of learning the underlying details. So don't slack, shave the yak, trademark sign 2023 Kevin Otten Jr. The next thing that's helped me learn faster is making an intentional effort to read more books related to software engineering. Books are one of the absolute best ways to speed up your learning for a handful of reasons. If you think about it, books allow you to learn things that might have taken their authors years to learn themselves. Books also give you access to some of the smartest or most successful people in your field in a medium that you can consume at your own pace in almost anywhere in the world. In line at a store waiting to check out? Read a paragraph of something. Waiting for a friend at a coffee shop who says they're two minutes away? You could probably go ahead and read the chapter because we all know that means they're at least 10 minutes out. Reading every single day is one of my favorite habits that I've decided to pick up this year. I make a conscious effort to read any book related to software engineering at some point during the day, and then I read any book at night before bed. This has allowed me to learn more about clean architecture, system design, and if Harry Potter does or does not defeat Lord Voldemort. <laughs> Listen, first, I don't want to spoil anything. And second, I've never read the book, so I figured that now is the perfect time. After all, telling people that I'm reading books for 10 year olds does not get better the longer I wait. One thing I've learned from reading every day is just how much it allows you to accomplish over time. So far since January 1st, I've finished 10 entire books, and my goal for the whole year was to read 12. Forming this habit has made me realize just how easy it is to actually add reading to your day. And if you don't have time to literally read, you would definitely be interested in the sponsor of today's video. I really, I really should have lined up that sponsorship. 
Some days reading a chapter in my engineering book takes five minutes. Other days it might take 30, but every single time I read a chapter, I'm happy that I did. I feel accomplished and proud that I learned something. And reading before bed has really allowed me to calm my mind at the end of the day and fall asleep more easily. I've also realized that ever since I started reading before bed, I tend to get more deep sleep, which I, I assume is good for me. Maybe. I know what you're gonna say, Kevin, I don't have time to read. To which I say, take 15 seconds right now as I'm speaking to you to get the top apps on your phone. If you're spending 27 minutes on Instagram, 18 minutes on Twitter, and I literally don't even wanna know how many minutes on TikTok every single day, then you can take two minutes and read Green Eggs and Ham by Dr. Seuss or any other book that you want just as easily. Seriously though, open the Kindle app or Apple Books or Google Books on your phone and just start reading any title that you're interested in. And if you do this every single time that you subconsciously reach for and unlock your phone and open up the same social media app for the 12th time in the last five minutes, I have no doubt that you'll be well on your way to becoming a bookworm. So the spark notes for this point is to read books. It's easier than you think and it'll really help you learn if you're consistent. While reading books is great, there's simply no substitute for writing code. In fact, if I had to give one piece of advice to someone learning to code or trying to get better at code, I would give them one simple sentence write more code. Something I learned over the years and especially throughout college is that doing is oftentimes the best way to learn something. Textbooks and videos can help you conceptually understand a topic, but they're no substitute for actually doing the work. My favorite comparison for doing versus learning is finding a gym trainer. Who would you rather work out with? Someone who's actually dedicated the time and effort to successfully have become healthy and fit, or someone who's done all the research to be able to do so, but has taken no actionable steps towards actually becoming healthy and fit. It's an easy choice. Sometimes an honest assessment of what you're doing to learn and progress toward your goals can be helpful as well. Are you prioritizing your goals? Are you honestly putting in the amount of time and effort required to accomplish them? And are you focusing on the right things? Having small recurring check-ins every month or so can be really helpful to make sure that you adjust what isn't working. I've also found that simply expecting more of yourself can be really helpful in making sure that you learn faster too. By raising the bar that you hold yourself to, you'll have no choice but to put in more time and effort to learn and improve faster. Consistently making lists is the next thing that'll help you learn faster as a software engineer. Making lists is a great way to identify and remember things you don't understand or struggling with. And when you have time, you can do a deep dive and learn the topics that you jot down. Half the battle in learning and improving as a software engineer is knowing what you don't know. The other half is filling those knowledge gaps once you identify them. Personally, I like to keep my list somewhere I can see them so that I don't forget about them. This also encourages me to take steps towards tackling what's on the list and achieve that sweet, sweet feeling that we all love when we get to cross something off a list. It's so satisfying. I also do my best to try and make sure that things on the list don't linger for too long. For making lists, I've definitely learned two things. First, the longer that something remains on the list, the less likely that it ever is to get done. And second, when you wait, things pile up on your list and it becomes longer and that tends to make people stressed, like me. I get stressed. I get very stressed when I have a long to-do list. A good approach here is similar to the one we discussed with reading. Investigate and learn about one of the things on your list each and every day. This will really help ensure that you're feeling productive and consistently learning. And the truth is, the hardest part is always starting. If you don't feel motivated to learn about any of those topics on your list, set a timer for two minutes and promise yourself that after the two minutes, you could stop researching the topic. The good news is that if you're able to start, chances are you'll continue learning about the topic well past the two-minute timer you originally set. So congrats, you've officially tricked yourself into learning about a topic you originally did not want to two minutes ago. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, drop the video a like, subscribe to the channel for more, and I'll see you guys next time.